Uh, one of the best things about most English people, and certainly all of my friends, is that you can disagree and it has zero bearing on your relationship. I think that's a good thing, as it allows an honesty of an opinion uh, that helps both sides improve their understanding of what the other thinks is important. Everyone who has left their childhood has an appreciation of their own mortality. That is, that this is the only life that we get, whether they believe in something after or not. We have all developed our own strategies for muddling through. The sole measure of success for these strategies is whether or not they have helped us or hindered us through our life. Uh, that is to say, would we be happier or more miserable if we didn't have those strategies? Fear is never a force for happiness. It is a force for misery. Nobody wishes they were more fearful. Fear increases stress, anxiety, and diminishes the natural pleasures of being alive. Now, this is not to say we should abandon our sense of self-preservation in the face of actual danger. Rather, we should seek to replace a fear of any danger with an understanding of how best to deal with that danger. Uh, we make very bad decisions when we are fearful. Fear is a very blunt instrument and poorly calibrated to reality. It can escalate quickly and lead to some very poor choices. We stop thinking about the actual danger and react to the fear instead. We choose things that most quickly reduce our fear, fight or flight responses, uh, which are very good dealing uh, with snakes or wasps, um, I guess, but less so if it inspires panic during a fire alarm in a crowded place, for example. Fear is bad because it's an emotional response at a time when thought is most needed. Doing the right thing, or the moral thing, is invariably the product of thought and never the product of fear. When governments want us to do something, uh, or to plan to do something expensive, or anything that will reduce our freedoms, they typically use fear. Terrorism, immigration, foreigners, security, are all excuses used to sell solutions to problems that don't exist, or to make us feel safer rather than actually increasing safety. Knowing, and they do this knowing that if squeezed, people will follow their fears rather than their heads. So fears make us susceptible to con men. Understanding and knowledge protects us from being misled. Fear blinds us to irrationality. How many people have given up their apparently dangerous hair gel at the airport only to see it tossed into a bin uh, which presumably contains some amazing technology that neutralises the danger it posed if it were to remain in our luggage? So be very aware of anyone telling you that fear is good that it keeps you alive or some other such nonsense. It isn't fear, but knowledge that keeps us alive. Fear does not stop us running into roads. It's knowledge that does that. Fear is typically the reason people end up running into roads. Think for yourself. When somebody tells you to be more fearful, ask, why is this person wishing I were more afraid? People will always seek to reduce fear. What I'm saying is that it should be knowledge and understanding that we reach for. Since these are both most likely to permanently allay a particular fear and will also often open up the door to opportunity, as in the case of the first person to use fire rather than run from it. In the case of fire, the knowledge though is only valuable if it's true. If you were to postulate that fire was a good treatment for a skin rash, you would probably end up increasing your fear of fire. However, when you use it for cooking, you find that fire becomes a tool that can be controlled and add tremendous value and taste to most things. So the value of knowledge is only as great as its usefulness. Untrue knowledge is useless and may even be harmful. Religion is faith-based and not knowledge-based. Faith is not knowledge. It is the hope that certain claims are true. It is the caveman hoping that fire is as, as good a healer of sores as it is for cooking. I think that religion is attractive because it does reduce the fear many feel at the prospect of death. For many, it is an excellent strategy for muddling through. Whether or not it's true, it reduces the fear of, un of uh, the unknown by replacing it with a belief that you do know, uh, or faith. 
It sells you solutions to problems that it invents. It tells you that this group or that group is bad, or that food is some different type of food is wrong. Uh, these are claims uh, that need to be tested before they can be called true and be called valuable. One of my favourite people on YouTube, um, as many will know, is Simph Controversy. I believe him to be an earnest believer who has called the Bible a textbook filled with problems to test the reader and to hone his understanding of the morality and advice espoused by Jesus. I like this interpretation and I think that it has established in him a perfectly satisfactory strategy for maximising his own happiness and helping him understand his fears. I, on the other hand, am interested in maximising understanding. I believe it to be the better way to replace fear and to combat the forces of misery. Science produces demonstrably true and therefore valuable knowledge, and it's probably far more likely uh, to be successful in telling you how to go about reducing poverty and increasing opportunity for others to find happiness. I value science because it has been shown to work. If it did not work, it would not have value and would not help people to reduce their fear or increase their opportunity. Science doesn't invent reasons for you to believe it. It does not tell you to hate one group because you will score points after you die. This seems to me to be more compatible with the reduction of fear and existing on a planet with other people uh, than other philosophies do. Now, to be absolutely clear, this is not to say that I'm more likely than Simph to help someone in need. It is not to say that I'm a better friend or son or husband or person. It is to say that as strategies for muddling through life and fending off those forces of misery, I favour understanding and demonstrated truth over faith. And that's it. So make of that what you will. Thank you very much.